Hey, scientists, welcome back. This is lesson six, part one of the sixth grade unit, Oceans, Atmosphere, and Climate. And today's lesson is titled Patterns in Global Ocean Currents. So to help you be successful with this lesson today, you'll need two things. You'll need something to write on, something to write with, just something to you know jot your ideas as you have them you're going to have some really good ideas today and also having another person to talk to so you have your ideas you can bounce them back and forth it really helps you do the science all right let's get started the new zealand farm council asked us to help them understand the answer to this question during el nino years why is christchurch new zealand's temperature cooler than usual so we started this unit by making initial claims about why Christchurch's air temperature is cooler than usual during El Nino years. And we had an idea that it could be something about the energy from the sun or something to do with the Earth's surface, either the ocean or the land, or it could have something to do with the air, the, the atmosphere, something there might be changing. So far, we know that both the air temperature and the ocean surface temperature are cooler during El Nino years. These two graphs on this page show that happening. The orange bar shows the air temperature during El Nino years, and in the ocean temperature graph, the orange bar also shows that. And in both those graphs, we can see that the El Nino year is colder even though the amount of incoming energy from the sun stays the same. We can see that in this graph here that during a normal year and an El Nino year, it's the same amount of energy from the sun. So using what we've learned so far, we can eliminate claim one. We know that the amount of energy received from the sun is not changing during El Nino years. So far, you've learned about two things that affect Christchurch's New Zealand's air temperature. It's latitude and the ocean current that passes its shore. You also know that this ocean current comes from the equator, which is a location that receives a lot of energy from the sun. We can see these currents moving past Christchurch, New Zealand. Um, we also know that the current affects the ocean surface temperature. So something about the ocean current that passes Christchurch must change, but what? What could cause an ocean current to change? Okay, so before we can figure out what causes ocean currents to change, we first have to figure out what causes ocean currents in the first place. So let's take a moment to think about the ideas we already have. This map shows the movement pattern for major ocean currents. So what ideas do you have about what might make ocean currents move? So before we go on in our lesson, take a moment to either write down some ideas or discuss them with a partner. Hi, this is part two of lesson six. What causes ocean currents? I'm really curious to know what ideas you have about what causes ocean currents. If we were together, I would be excited to hear what you and your partner or just yourself were thinking about that answer, but keep it in your mind as we do the next part of our lesson. So what you're gonna need for this part of the lesson is something to write on and with, another person to talk to, and um, if possible, a copy of an article called the Gulf Stream, a current that helped win a war. So how can you get a copy of this article? So to read the Gulf Stream, a current that helped win a war, you can either get it from the Seattle Public School Science Department by going to this link, which is www.seattleschools.org slash academics slash curriculum slash science. And once you're on that page, scroll down until you see middle school. And then from there, you can download the lesson six packet from the Oceans, Atmosphere, and Climate Unit. Or if you're a sixth grader and you have access to Amplify Science, then just open the Amplify Science, just like you would normally through Clever. And then from the menu, choose the library. And then go to the Oceans, Atmosphere, and Climate Unit, and then choose the article called The Gulf Stream, A Current That Helped Win a War. 
So in order to figure out what determines how ocean currents near Christchurch move, we must first understand what causes ocean currents to move. So Kiti Parada, the director of the New Zealand Farm Council, has sent an article to help you understand this question. All right, I've opened the article and it's called The Gulf Stream, A Current That Helped Win a War. And when I first look at this map, I wonder about these different colors. What do they show? I could write a question about that, but I am going to see if I can get a bit more information and ask a deeper question. So I see there's a caption, and the caption says, This image of the Atlantic Ocean uses color to show water temperature. The warmest water looks red, and the coolest water looks blue. You can see the warmer water of the Gulf Stream traveling north along the coast of North America. So if I scroll up a little bit to look at this picture again, I, I do notice that there seems to be uh, the color of the water is more red and orange that follows along this red line. So I, I know that these colors represent ocean surface temperatures. And so I wonder how the Gulf Stream affects ocean surface temperature. So I'll record a question about that. So maybe I'll just click here and I can write a question here. So I wrote my question in that box and if you're using a paper copy of this article, then you can just write down some of your ideas. Or if you're just reading along with me instead of having an article in front of you, then just jot down some of your thoughts as we're reading on a piece of paper. So let's, let's keep going down. And let's read the first paragraph. It says, oh, let me move my picture a little bit. Can you believe that an ocean current may have helped the United States become the United States? Before the Revolutionary War, Benjamin Franklin, you may know him as one of the founders of our country, and his cousin mapped a strong current called the Gulf Stream, which flows north along the east coast of the United States. So, so right away, I have a couple questions. I'm wondering how could... Um, an ocean current help win a war. So I have a question about that, but I, I want my question to go a little deeper than that. So I'm going to keep reading just to see if there's some more things that I could wonder about. Okay, so starting with this, this sentence, understanding. Understanding where the Gulf Stream flows was helpful for sailors coming and going from the East Coast ports because ships that sailed in the same direction as the Gulf Stream or cut straight across it could go faster than ships that tried to sail against it. Some people have even claimed that this knowledge of the Gulf Stream might have helped America win the Revolutionary War because American ships were able to travel around the area more quickly than British ships. So after reading the rest of that paragraph, it seems like the sailors that used this current to increase their speed and make the trip go faster because they understood a little bit more about the currents than other people. So this was a long time ago. So I wonder if sailors today still use the same Gulf current to travel faster. And so I might highlight where it says ships were able to travel around the area more quickly and make a note and ask my question, do sailors today use the Gulf current to go faster? Okay, let's save that. All right, let's keep reading. Oh, so here's a, well, it kind of looks like an antique map. The caption says, Benjamin Franklin and his cousin made the first maps of the Gulf Stream. If I look at this map, I can see it looks like the east coast of the United States, and then there's this large sort of gray stripe in the ocean that looks like it's representing the, the Gulf Stream. It looks like a similar picture here um, with the same kind of band, just drawn differently. But let's read more about this. I'm intrigued about how this current forms. The Gulf Stream still flows today, and it still affects how goods are shipped around the world. The Gulf Stream forms near the tip of Florida and flows north, carrying warm water from the Caribbean up the east coast of North America and across the North Atlantic. This large, strong current carries more than 100 million cubic meters of water per second. 
more than all the world's rivers combined. That is so much water. Okay. I, I have some questions about this. I, I know the ocean is full of water, so I shouldn't be surprised that a current has a lot of water, obviously. But it's interesting that it's saying that the current is moving faster than the water around it. And it says that it moves 100 million cubic meters of water per second. So I'm just going to highlight that. And I just, I wonder, is that faster than other currents? Do all currents move at this speed? And in addition to these two questions, I do also wonder how it forms, like what causes the Gulf Stream to form in that location? And I know that Kitty Parada sent this article to help us understand more about how ocean currents form. And so I'm, I'm eager to keep reading because I think the answer to this last question that I wrote is going to be found later in the article. So let's keep reading. Okay, so what causes the Gulf Stream current to flow and what determines its route? Route is just a word that means the pathway that something takes. The strength and direction of the Gulf Stream are driven partly by, ooh, vocab word, prevailing winds. Winds that blow in the same direction and are strong enough to push ocean water around. So let's pause for just a moment and let's take a look at this vocabulary word that we just learned from the article. Prevailing winds are winds that move in one direction and are strong enough to push ocean currents. So that's an important vocab word for us to remember as we're trying to understand how ocean currents form. All right, so let's keep reading. Okay, prevailing winds near the equator blow from east to west across the ocean. Prevailing winds farther north and south blow in the opposite direction. They blow from west to east. Another factor that affects the direction of the Gulf Stream and other ocean currents is the location of the continents. When a current hits a continent, it is redirected to follow the coastline. So here's the picture that we were looking at at the beginning of our lesson. And now this is a little different. It shows major ocean currents and prevailing winds. So you can see there are red lines, blue lines, and now white lines. Let me move this up. The, the title is cut off a little bit by my picture, but you can actually see quite a lot here. So it told us that the prevailing winds by the equator move from east to west. And we can see that happening here. This is the equator. You can see it happening here. That's near the equator. These ones come up, but they're also traveling from east to west. And then it says that prevailing winds north and south of the equator fall the other way. And if I look really closely at this map, I'm also noticing that the currents seem to be following in the same direction as the wind. If you look here, you can see this, this white line represents the prevailing wind. If I look at this red line, it's traveling the same direction. This red line, same direction. This blue line and that blue line, same direction. But then it seems like when it hits a continent, it changes the direction of it because it runs along the coast of the continent. That's what the article is telling us and that's what this graphic is showing too. Let's keep reading. Okay, near the equator, the prevailing winds blow from the east to the west and drive ocean currents from the east to the west. Closer to Earth's poles, the prevailing winds blow in the opposite direction from west to east. On this map, you can see how the direction of the prevailing, the direction of the prevailing winds in different places on Earth affect the patterns of the ocean current. Okay, so the Gulf Stream, back to what we're learning about in this article, flows from south to north. So from Florida in the south up past Maine um, in the north. How do winds blowing from the east or west make a current that's moving north? So that's actually a, re a really good question that I wonder too. So I'm just going to highlight that question instead of writing my own because I'm like, yeah, I want to know the answer to that too. The Gulf Stream starts off the coast of Florida where the prevailing winds blow the water west towards the coast of North America. So 
when okay hold on it says here um where the prevailing winds blow the water west towards florida in the same direction as the wind when the water reaches florida it can't go further west florida is in the way so it can't keep going so it's forced to turn so the water flows north along the edge of north america when the gulf stream reaches new england the prevailing winds moving from west to east blow the Gulf Stream away from the coast of North America and across the North Atlantic. So let's look at that one more time. So here is kind of where we are, and we can see that the winds are blowing this way. They're just pushing the water, pushing the water, and when it hits North America, it just travels up. But when it gets up to the top, there are these prevailing winds flowing east, and so it gets pushed that way. That's cool. And then you get a graph then you get a picture that looks like this, where it's pushing this way, it runs along the coast, and then up here it gets pushed that way. Okay, I feel like I'm learning so much about this. It's very interesting. Okay, so um, let's see. The Gulf Stream warms up the air wherever it goes. The warm water carried from the equator contains a lot of energy, which transfers to the cooler air above it, bringing warmer temperatures to the east coast of North America and making Western Europe warmer than other places at similar latitudes. Oh, that's so interesting. We already know that energy from the ocean can transfer to the air or energy in the air can transfer to the ocean, depending on which one is cooler and which one, one is warmer. So what we're hearing here is that because this water is so warm, it's actually transferring energy to the air. And so the the any land that's near this Gulf Stream is going to have warmer air than it would at another place with the same latitude. Okay, so this caption just says the Gulf Stream begins when warm water near the equator is pushed west across the Atlantic Ocean by prevailing winds. That's a nice summary of what we've been learning so far. When the water runs into North America, it is forced to go north along the coastline. In this map, the warmest water is represented by the color red, and the coldest water is represented by the color blue. Water at a temperature between the warmest and the coldest is represented by yellow, orange, or green. The Gulf Stream is one of the most important surface ocean currents in the world. Wow. Okay, that seems like something worth highlighting. I'm going to do that. Okay, because that seems important. It is very strong. It covers a long distance and has significant effects on the way humans live. Without its influence on trade routes and maybe even on the Revolutionary War, the United States might never have become the United States. Wow, this is, this is a pretty cool article. Okay, so there was one other vocab word that popped up besides prevailing winds, and that vocab word is continents. And I think you probably already know what that word means, but let's just go ahead and review it. It's just any of Earth's main continuous areas of land, such as Africa, Asia, North or South America, any of those continents. So after reading this article, I have a question that I want you to think about. I want you to discuss it with someone if you can, or jot down some of your ideas about it. But after reading this article, how could you answer this question now? What determines how ocean currents move. Okay, this is lesson six, part three. And now that we're done reading a little bit about the Gulf Stream, let's take a moment to explore in the sim some of the ideas that we just learned. So this part of the lesson is called using the digital model to investigate winds and currents. So for this part of the lesson, you'll need something to write on, something to write with, and someone to talk to. And then also, if you have access to the oceans, atmosphere, and climate, and if you have access to the oceans, atmosphere, and climate sim from Amplify, then you can use that. Otherwise, you can watch me explore on the sim, and we'll discuss some of the things that we're discovering together. Okay, so this, this is the directions. Okay, so these are the directions. The first thing you'll do is, okay, so you read about a warm current called the Gulf Stream. So now let's investigate a warm current in the sim and make observations about what we notice. So we're going to start by launching the ocean atmosphere and climate sim. And then we want to select wind map mode. 
and find a warm current. And we'll know it's a warm current because it's coming from the equator. And if you have access to the sim, then you can go ahead and go explore that and then come back. But before you go, what I'd like you to do while you're exploring is focus on the current you selected and observe the direction of the wind and the direction of the warm current. So after you're done recording some of those observations, some of the things that I want you to do while you're exploring is set the speed of the wind to high and then try it at medium and then low and observe what happens to the current. How does the speed of the prevailing winds affect the ocean currents? So this is what the wind map mode will look like. So go explore and then come back and we'll discuss what we learned. Okay, here's the sim for oceans, atmosphere, and climate. And I'm going to select wind map mode. Yes, let's load that. So you can see right away that although it looks similar, there now are these white lines that you know represent prevailing winds. So I'll go ahead and hit play. And when I do that, you'll notice the little white lines that represent the currents show up on the map. So as I look at this, I can see just like we saw or we read about in the article we read that the currents move in this direction of the prevailing winds. And when they hit a continent, they seem to kind of go up it. So our directions were to select a warm current and we would know it was warm because it was coming from the equator. So as I kind of move around here, I can see that there's a lot of prevailing winds right here along the zero degree line, which is the equator, you can see there. And I noticed that, um, let's just go ahead and select this beautiful gyre right here. So this water is from the equator. It's getting warmer and warmer and warmer as it's getting more energy from the sun. It hits continent C and it starts to go down. And I notice then as it gets to here where the prevailing winds are going in an opposite direction, they start to move towards the east. And so um, as they're moving east, then they hit this continent and then they move west. So we get this beautiful gyre forming. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if we increase the wind strength. So we're going to move it to high and it's still at one times play, but I definitely see the currents start to move more quickly and um, they have like longer lines, which makes me think that the currents may be the same amount of, of time is going by, but the current is traveling further. So that's pretty interesting. I'm going to slow it down to low. We already saw medium, so let's go to low. And when I do that, I can see that the currents are still there. They are moving more slowly. Um, the longer it takes for the water to move, I would think that energy is going to transfer at the same rate. So the longer it takes for the current to move, maybe the current would have less energy as it got further away from the equator. So we'll have to kind of explore that idea. So... One other thing that we can do while we're exploring the sim, which would be kind of cool, is do you see down here where we can change the direction of the wind? Let's try it. So I'm, here's normal. Let's change it to reverse. Whoa. Okay. So what did we see happen? So this is different than how it is on Earth. Now the winds of the equator are moving towards the east instead of the west like, like they were. And we notice right away that the currents also change direction to follow the prevailing winds. So we know the currents and the prevailing winds are connected that the currents are pushed by the winds, by the prevailing winds. So that's, that's pretty cool. Okay, so let's think about everything that we have discovered together. Okay, so there's four main things that we discovered while we were exploring the sim. The first thing is we know that the currents go in the same direction as the wind. And when you change the direction of the wind, the water changes direction too. So that's one thing that we discovered. The second thing we discovered is that the currents go faster when the wind is set to high and they go slower when the wind is set to low. So that's the second thing we learned. Um, one of the things that we also discovered is that the continents force the currents to change direction as well. So that's the third thing that we learned. And the fourth final thing that we learned is that the currents cannot travel through the continents. They have to go around. So that's why the continents change direction. So we've discovered a lot of things in the sim, but in the next part of the video, we're going to take what we learned in the sim and in the article, and we're going to do a hands-on activity to see if we can model this in real life. Okay.
Hi, welcome back. This is Oceans, Atmosphere, and Climate Lesson 6, Part 4, and I have some helpers with me. This is my family. I'll let them introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Charlotte. Hi, I'm Eliza. And I'm Jacob. And they're going to help us do the current tank investigation. Okay, so to be successful, you're going to need a couple of things. You'll need to have something to write on, something to write with, someone to talk to, and you can also gather a few materials around your house for this activity, which is a straw. If you don't have a straw, you can tightly roll up a piece of paper and you can use it just like you would a straw. And then you also need ground pepper and then a shallow waterproof container like a baking pan or we have a rectangular plastic tray. Anything like that would work just great. Scientists use models to learn about the things that they can't observe directly and so we're going to use this model to learn about prevailing winds. And this is the question that we're trying to answer. What determines how ocean currents move. You read an article about ocean currents and about the Gulf Stream. You did an exploration on the sim, so this is a chance to do an, expl an exploration in real life. Okay, so today we're going to be modeling how the prevailing winds around the earth influence the currents of the ocean, and you'll be creating wind through straws. Show them your straws, you guys. There we go, we've got some straws. And we'll be creating wind through these straws to model the winds around the Earth. So, Jacob, will you tell my students um, what the parts of the model represent? Yeah, so the water inside of the bin represents the ocean. The blowing through the straw represents the prevailing winds. Um, the pepper inside of it is to illustrate the moving ocean currents to show movement. And the sides of the tank represent uh, the continents. So our bin has four sides, and that's pretty normal for a bin, unless you're using a circle cake pan, which is actually fine as well. But on our planet, we have continents, and so the walls of the tank just represent the continents. Okay, so as you create your model, you'll have three missions that you're trying to complete, and you'll need to record your observations. So a couple of things about safety before we go on. First of all, do not share straws. We don't want to share any bacteria or viruses. And um, we're just going to have one person at a time. If you're doing this by yourself, that's, that's totally okay. But just notice that if you start to blow through the straw too much, you might start to feel a little bit dizzy. And if that happens, stop blowing. Sit down until the filling goes away because you can sometimes get a little dizzy if you blow too much through the straw. Okay, so here are the three steps to doing this activity. First, we're going to discuss and record our predictions, and you can either draw your predictions on a piece of paper or you can just talk with each other like we're going to do here. And then think about how you could actually complete the mission and then make a prediction um, with a drawing about how you think each mission will work. So once you actually discuss your predictions, then move on to the missions. So there's, there's three all together and you're going to do one at a time. And so after you're done with the mission, then discuss it or jot down, just write down some of your ideas. Okay, Charlotte, you get to do the first mission. Are you ready? Okay, so in this mission, what we're trying to do is find a way to make the current move in one direction like a gyre. And my students have learned that the word gyre just means an ocean current that moves in a circular path. So that's what we're going to try to do. So the predictions that we drew beforehand, and this is just an example prediction, is that if we blow with wind across the middle of the, of the container, then we could create a current in the shape of a gyre. Okay, so do you want to try that? And then we'll see if we have to adjust our predictions as we go. Okay, Charlotte, let's see if we can make this work. Try to draw, and you want to blow across the surface of the water. Okay. Oh, I see it starting to move. You can see that happening. You can see a flow. Okay, keep doing that. I'm noticing the water is moving in this direction. When it hits the wall here, it starts to go this way or that way, which is very similar to what we saw in the sim when we were doing that. And then I see it coming down. Do you think that you've created a gyre like this? What do you think, Charlotte? Or does it, it's kind of going along. The it's kind of like going along, like maybe you have almost two gyres, huh? Where do you think you should move your straw so that you can just have one gyre? Okay, try that. Move it all the way over there. Okay, yeah. Let's give that a go. Okay, now I see the water moving this way. And it's the pepper that we're seeing moving, but the pepper is just moving as the water moves. 
Oh yeah, look at that. You can see that is a nice gyre forming. Yeah, what do you think, Jacob? Do we have a gyre? Yeah, yeah I, think, I think so too. Yeah, there's a big gyre here. Okay, all right, that looks great. Let's talk about what we just did. Um, do you think that we were able to complete this mission? Uh, yeah. yeah, we were, so we could check off yes. And then if yes, describe how, and if no, why not? So when Charlotte, when you first started blowing Charlotte, you blew down the middle and we saw kind of a current forming along the bottom and also one along the top, right? Yeah. So then how did you adjust the wind to make it so that you could just get one big giant gyre? I went on one half side of the tank. Yeah, so she just moved uh, her straw to here and started blowing there so that it could go all the way around and we were able to successfully do it. Okay. All right, Eliza, are you ready for mission two, which is a little bit harder? Let's, yes. let's give it a go. So with mission two, we need to find a way to make the current move in a direction that's different from mission one, so not in a gyre. So let's see if we can get an ocean current to form in a way that's not a gyre. And um, what's your prediction? How do you think you'll need to blow in this um, tank to get something that's not a gyre? Um, blow straight down. Okay. Yeah, let's give it a go. Okay, Eliza, we got this adjusted. Um, show us your plan of blowing straight down. What seemed to happen when we did that? Um, it moved away from the middle. Yeah, it did. It moved away from the middle. Okay, so the thing is, prevailing winds, which the straw and the air represent, only blow across the surface of the ocean, across the surface yeah. of the earth. And so your way is a good way to do this, but maybe wouldn't happen in real life. Yes. So why don't you try a different way to see if you can complete mission two? Do we need more pepper? We always need more pepper. Okay, go for it. So you're going down the kind of corner. And what did you see happen there? The same thing. Um, describe kind of. what you mean by same thing. It's like moving in half the pan like so two gyres two gyres in the pan when we blow across so mm -hmm. it seems like every single time when the current moves when it hits the wall mm -hmm. um or the wall that represents the continent it starts to kind of move in a gyre form okay all right that sounds pretty good talk about mission two and were we able to successfully complete mission two um, no, no, no. We would say no. That doesn't mean anything's wrong with you. It just <laughs> means that, um, it seems like ocean currents in this model like to form gyres, don't they? It hits the wall of the continent, hits the wall of the continent, and bends and forms a gyre in a container. Okay, so are you ready for mission three? This one is really complicated, so we're going to make Jacob do this one. Okay. okay, Jacob, are you ready? Yes. Okay, here is mission three. In mission three, we have to find a way to make the current move faster than it moved in the previous missions. Hmm. Okay, let's give it a try. Okay, so Jacob, before we do mission three, I'll add a little bit more pepper. Tell us your prediction. How, how do you think you can get this current to move faster than it did in the previous two missions? Um, well, maybe we could blow faster, but... Um... Other than that, I think just keeping it as close as to the edge as you can so you can make it move as quickly as you want. Okay, so I heard you say two things, which is one, to blow along the edge of the container, and two, to increase the wind. So to blow harder and faster to make it the wind stronger. Yeah. Okay, let's give it a try. Go ahead and see what we can do. Definitely more intense wind. I definitely still see a gyre forming. We're losing some pepper. <laughs> and um, what do you two girls think? Do you think that we do have a gyre that's moving faster than you guys did? Yeah. Yeah, so increasing the speed of the wind seems to increase the current speed as well. Yes. Okay, all right. Okay, so we just completed mission three. And Jacob, tell us about your results. Were you able to complete this mission? Yeah, it moved faster when you blew faster, so okay. that was good. So increasing the speed increases the speed of the wind increases the speed of the current. Okay, we discovered a lot of really cool things today. Thank you for helping me out. 
Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so we've learned so much in lesson six. Let's just kind of wrap it up by looking at this picture one more time. Prevailing winds set ocean currents in motion. We can see the white lines here and they're pushing the ocean currents there. The currents are pushed in the same direction as the wind until they reach the edge of a continent, which causes the currents to change direction and move along the continent. So this is an exciting moment because we've just uncovered another key concept. So this key concept says prevailing winds and the position of continents determine the direction of ocean currents. So if we think back to the beginning of lesson six, we wondered what could cause currents to change, but we knew that before we could answer that question, we had to first be able to explain what could cause currents to form. So now that we know that, we're ready to start thinking about what could cause an ocean current to change? So I want you to think about that before we go on to lesson seven, where we're going to discover some answers to that question. I just want you to think on your own over the next couple of days before you watch lesson seven, what, what do you think? What could cause an ocean current to change? Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye.